Mueller, but he passes it. Miller, Eastwick, Mooney, Jackson, and Leftwich also in the starting five for Clinton. And for Rutgers, that is Brent Dabbs, who we didn't see the first time here on ESPN a few weeks ago when Clark and I were in here to see Rutgers upset Missouri. Now Dabbs back in the middle. One would think makes them better. Hughes, Smith, Carter will start in the backcourt. Earl Duncan has a sprained ankle. He will play today, but he will not start. Princeton leading this series convincingly. 65 to 31. They've won four of the last five. Which is something of a surprise. Rutgers the only unbeaten Atlantic 10 team left and their best start since 1982. All right, we're set to go. Good morning to much of the country. Dabs and Miller will go up. And Princeton will have it first time. Leftwich and Jackson again the backcourt. Princeton going right inside to Miller. Rutgers opens in a man to man. Important again for them to be patient at the defensive end. Princeton wants to use 30, 38 seconds of that shot clock and hope you wear down defensively. Miller will play all over the place. Inside, outside. That's Jackson with the ball. Mooney goes back inside to Miller. Tries to find a way. No. And it's Hughes with the rebound. I really think it's important for Rutgers to get an early lead. Princeton very good at playing on top because they're excellent free throw shooters. 30 seconds, Princeton held the ball in their first possession. And when you say an early lead, Clark, you're, you're talking like 8 to 10 points. Exactly. Six points is not enough simply because Princeton is a team that shoots the three-pointer and they shoot it fairly well, 39% on the year. And Rutgers turns it over, trying to be patient on the offensive end. Mike Jones with the travel. Princeton pretty good defensively. I talked to assistant coach Jan Van Bredekoff prior to this afternoon's tilt. He talked about how they had struggled with consistency at the offensive end, but defensively they've been playing very well. There's a little weave looking to get Jackson open for the three. They found him. Can't get it down. And it's all Rutgers on the board. Dabs with his first rebound. Now you see what's happening here? Rutgers is a team that likes to play up-tempo. But even after the defensive board, they walk it up. And that's what Princeton will do to you. They'll force you to play at a slower pace. We may be out of here in an hour and a half, too. I and mean, this is like running time, this game. <laughs> Hughes can't hit outside. Hustles and gets his own rebound and gets it back out to Jones. They'll start over again. Princeton showing a 1-2-2, one, 1-3-1 two, two, one, one look. Matchup zone. Carter takes it in the paint. His shot won't go. Miller battles and comes down with the rebound. Lots of time for color in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Again, a double pick. Nice steal by Smith. Excellent hand. Smith takes it all the way. Won't get the layup, but through the foul. Mooney commits his first. Well, that's one way to increase the tempo of the game with a turnover. Active hands here by Smith. And he's one of their catalysts defensively, Daryl Smith. Really active and athletic. And with him, Jones, and Craig Carter in the lineup right now for Rutgers, they've got a pretty good defensive front, well, backcourt three. You and I both left here very impressed with Daryl Smith off the game against Missouri a few weeks back. He was everywhere. He was like a monster back in football. He was all over the place in that game against Missouri. Let's see if Rutgers goes to the full court pressure after the mate. Princeton's very good at handling pressure, taking care of the basketball, only averaging 10 turnovers a game. Eastwood 55 looking inside to Miller. Nice bounce pass for Jackson. And not lose sight of your man, Mike Jones. Ball watching, got burned. They get so many layups, but a little pressure here by the Tigers. Hughes and it's a backcourt violation. And we were kidding about that earlier. I was kidding the sports information director at Princeton. I said, you guys will come out pressing all over the floor. And, and you went and talked to Jan Van Bredekoff, and he said, yeah, we will a little bit. And exactly, and they do a nice job of forcing the turnover. Rutgers maybe not expecting that pressure, that possession. There's another cutback door, and it'll send 
Eastwick to the line. See, both of these teams know what the other wants to do. Look how, look, look, look at the floor spacing here. Now watch the back cut. There's Eastwick. Nice look by Miller. And this is a 79% free throw shooting team. But the key to their offensive execution is good ball handling, but more importantly, good floor spacing. Players 12, 15 feet apart, always ready to take what the defense gives. Here's the full court pressure. 2-2-1 two, two, it looks like now. 2-1-2, two, two, forcing it up the sidelines. No trap though, basically token pressure. Hughes flashing through the middle, lost the handle. Late call by Jerry Donahue. He's got Eastwick with the foul as first. I think one of the things Keith Hughes and Brent Dabbs are going to have to do when they catch it in the paint, flashing to the ball, they can't afford to put it down. There's nobody on Princeton's squad that can bother their shots inside. So they need to catch it looking to score right away. Jones resetting the offense. Hughes down in the blocks. Quick turnaround, Jay. He got away with the one dribble there, but I think the, the idea is good. He's got to look to score right away because they'll converge on him when he catches it inside. You know, the Rutgers kids have heard about how they'll get burned for these layups, and you can see it even though they didn't have the press crank up there, there's a tentativeness. They, they don't want to get caught out of position because they know what's going to happen. That's right. That's why you just have to be patient. You need good help side defense. And one of the other keys, you need pressure on the basketball. So you can't allow the passer to size up all these cutters. You've got to put some heat on it, get some hurries in there. A little housework going on in the far corner. It is a wet day here in the Northeast. Mixture of rain, sleet, snow outside. Lots of accidents in the area, and the sellout crowd is still filing in. But this place expected to be packed. In fact, they were selling standing room for this game in. Jackson and Leftwich. Leftwich 22. That's the kind of pressure you need on the basketball slide there by Daryl Smith. Big advantage for Princeton, too, is Miller can go just about anywhere on the floor. Mooney comes up shooting a three over the top. Rebound tipped out of bounds by Jones, and the Tigers will keep it. Miller gives you a good advantage there. He can come out to the top of the Exactly. Team. Their players are basically interchangeable, maybe with the exception of Eastwood. There's Jackson coming up with a steal after the turnover. But see, the other four guys can all go outside, and even Eastwood will go outside. But he's not as comfortable out there as the rest of the four, the rest of the Princeton player. Look at that. Look at that. Well, it doesn't get any better than that. Chris Mooney, his first bucket. Hughes, nice catch before the shot. A foul is going to go on Eastwick, and he's got two. Nice look to get it over the top of the press by Daryl Smith. But excellent offensive execution. Both of these teams know what the other is going to do. It's just a matter of who executes it better. 15.35 left to go here first half. Second foul on Eastwick. Princeton a two-point lead. Well, Daryl Smith is going to get caught in the left portion of your screen looking at the basketball. And any time you turn your head defensively against the Princeton player, immediately the back cut. Chris Mooney gets the deuce. It's just, you know, it's fun to watch Princeton because you don't see guys making good hard basket cuts on a regular basis or ball cuts, and they do it. They do an outstanding job of floor spacing and finding the cutting player. I always feel like I'm watching an instructional film. <laughs> Very <laughs> clinical in nature, that's for sure. Hughes flashing into the lane, short with that Mooney the rebound. And Leftwich will walk it up. talked about Miller can come out and really believe any ball pressure and if Dabbs tries to cover him too tight you get the feeling Miller will go by him. Well Dabbs doing what he needs to do out that far away from the hoop you don't want to crowd Miller. 
Eastwood fakes the three. Leaves it to Mooney. Miller takes one with 10 in the shot clock. Three points for Kit Miller. And it's a 9-4 Tiger lead. And again, the pressure in the backcourt. This is not the way Rutgers wants to play from behind. And that's much more dangerous when they've got the lead. Jones down on the baseline. Gets the roll. Rutgers not going to press. He's going to back up and just play half-court defense. Need to see more of that type of penetration against the Princeton zone defense by Rutgers. Inside to Miller. Looking back outside of Jackson. Mooney backs it up. Down to 15 on the shot clock. So Princeton eating up 30 seconds plus at least. There's another cut, and this time it was Jones who got there in time to pick it off. Make it Smith right. All right, he anticipated beautifully that time. And Miller had made up his mind to make that pass before he caught the ball. A little trouble getting the handle. Bayon dabs in the middle for two. See, a little fumble on the baseline by Smith created that opportunity for Dabs inside. Down low to Miller. Back outside, Mooney. Too much Knocked time. Down a three. He had time to clean the gun, load it, then fire it. Can't give these guys that type of time, especially behind the three-point arc. Jones nearly lost it. Here's Carter. Down the lane, no traveling violation. Oh, I don't like that one. I might. Oh, that looked like a pretty nice move by Craig Carter. Take a look here. It's the jump step he Yes, calls. sir. That's a good move. Basket should have been good. Sometimes when you look funny making a move to the basket, that puts the whistle in the official's mouth. And Jerry Donahue very quick to break up some bumping between Jones and Eastwick. And it looks like the foul is going against Eastwick. And that is three on Matt Eastwick. So Pete Carrill into his bench a little earlier than he might like as Eastwick sits down with three. And here comes Earl Duncan in the lineup first time. Bob Wenzel goes to his bench. And Tom Savage also will check in for the Scarlet Knights. Chris Marquardt, a freshman, is in for Princeton. You were saying to me earlier, Clark, you felt the whole object of the Princeton full-court pressure was to get the wrong guy, as far as Rutgers is concerned, to handle the ball. That's right. Inside, and there's a foul on Marquardt over the back of Hughes. Nice execution here in the half court by Rutgers. But in talking to Coach Van Bredekoff, he talked about forcing the non-ball handling guard to handle the, handle the ball. And so far, it hasn't worked that way here in the early going. Hughes, that's a nice high-low action here. Duncan made the pass that led to the assist. Got it up top. And Hughes able to get inside and have an opportunity at the strike. Keith Hughes, they call him Shake because of how he wiggles those shoulders when he runs back after he scores. Got a chance at the next level. Great Good number. body. Yep. Can shoot it outside. Gets to the board. Put on about 15 pounds since last year. Ran at about 235 and said he feels great. Scarlet Knights back to within two, but the pace of this game very much the way Princeton would like it. 12 to 10. They've played eight minutes. Look at the space. Over the top, Miller, nice tip pass to Leftwich. Leftwich won't look to shoot it. Only averaging a couple of field goal attempts per game. Not too many guys do during the first 25 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Jackson, he will. Rutgers well, not having too much trouble getting that defensive rebound. But there a turnover as Duncan tried to 
sneak a pass through where there wasn't any room. See, and at this pace, every empty possession significant. Miller going to go on dabs this time, gets two. Hey, well, he's a deceptively tough inside player. You know, he walked by me while we were downstairs, and he put together pretty good. Marquardt getting there late and picks up the blocking foul, his second. So that one position for Pete Carrill is getting themselves in early foul trouble. Already Eastwick on the bench with three. Marquardt came in from him, and he picked up a quick two. We've got a timeout, 11-11 to go in the half. 14-10, for instance. ESPN top rank Alabama and North Carolina will take the court at 7.30. North Carolina looking for a payback off a loss last year and then a shootout of the first order. Loyola Marymount and the Oklahoma Sooners. All coming up this evening on ESPN and it has not been the loudest rack of the year here at the Lewis Brown Recreation Center. Well, the rack has been muzzled. As we expected, <laughs> yeah. Interesting number there. Savage touching it first time in the offensive end. Gives it to Duncan. Popping out dabs, launching one. Nice job by Miller boxing off on the boards. Princeton a four-point lead and the ball halfway through this first half. That's not something that Rutgers wants to allow to continue. Princeton the lead and the ball because they're dangerous in that situation. That cut didn't work, and Dabs was there. Well, Duncan for three. <laughs> Gotta get the fans here off their seat. Okay. You know, it's really not, not the type of game where the fans can get into it unless you're able to put together a little spurt. Miller trying the slap pass, comes up with it himself and lays it in. Accidental offense for the Tigers. They lead by three. Boy, when you catch it in the middle against the press, you need to look to attack. Hughes that time elected to pull it out. Anytime a team presses you, you ought to be looking to score. Greg Carter. Hughes dumping it to Dad. Carter now a little dribble drive, nearly lost it to left, which takes it back in traffic. Good dish, but no an offensive foul is called. As Matt Henson did a pretty good job, at least according to Jimmy Burr, of getting position in the lane. Boy, excellent idea. Let's take a look. Nice little hesitation. Now he gets into the heart of the defense. Three converge. And I tell you what, Henson backing up. Maybe not stationary there. Jackson looking inside, goes to Marquardt this time. Miller pops out. Marquardt wanting to go back, slapped away by Dabbs, but he stepped out of bounds. Nice play, though, by Brent Dabbs to get back in it. Got to be ready on the weak side against a team like Princeton. Always have to be conscious of man and ball. Henson goes low to Miller. Spins for the sweeping hook. Doesn't get the roll. Nearly tipped by Marquardt. Picked off the floor by Carter. Over to Duncan. Duncan, a little too tricky, and he lost it to Jackson. Two on one, Princeton break. Nice speed. Leftwich can't get it down. Out of bounds, off Duncan. Good call. Eight forty-one to go. Princeton still by three here in the first half. He's grilled. Bobby Wenzel. Tough to coach against legends. <laughs> and Pete is a legend. And a quick call on Dabs as he tried to get to Miller. Brent picking up his first personal foul. Just a third on Rutgers. Mike Jones. Checks back in, and Craig Carter goes out for the Scarlet Knights. Now, off that one pass right there, Clark. 
75% of the kids in college basketball who caught that way Jackson did just like let it go. I mean, they, <laughs> they just fired away when they got that inbound pass. They're looking for the high percentage shot. Miller way short. Nice hustle play there by Henson to come up with the rebound. And Princeton is making Rutgers stand around a bit here, Bob. Exactly. They do such a good job of keeping the floor spread. They've got the defense spread out as well, so on missed shots, there are more lanes to the offensive block. Miller looking to find some room. Blocked by Dabbs. Offensive foul called on Miller for jumping back in. Excellent call that time by Art McDonald. Miller trying to initiate contact. He's going to get the baseline, shoehorning along the baseline. Now watch the jump in. Good call. Excellent call. Jones bringing it up against Henson. Rutgers too tentative against the pressure. Savage looking to take it strong. Won't go for him. Here comes Leftwich. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Henson Off the ball. Savage. You Nobody got... saw it but us, Mike. Boy, Savage just slapped Henson across the face. Down low to Miller. Look at the spin on Dabbs, goes the other way, won't go left-handed, and Savage in there for the rebound. See, I don't see that emphasis to and run. And Jones just took a shot at Henshin on the other side of the floor. Who said this rivalry has died down? Good look down low, Dabbs for two. Mike Jones with a good feed. Watch off the ball, fans, because it's kind of chippy out there right it now. It really is. Miller's had a tough time. Rutgers doing a nice job just playing behind it. Miller Play behind his last three, yeah. And force him into a tough shot. Jackson for three. Rebound. Jones does a nice job of keeping the dribble alive and comes out of there himself. Another turnover by Rutgers. These empty trips are going to haunt this team before the day is through. See, what I think is happening, Mike, is Rutgers are slowing down too much. They're not really pushing the ball forward, and as a, as a result, they're turning it over. Six and a half to go first half, but Princeton still holding on to the lead. They're up by one. I won with 6.31 to go here in the first half. You know, the Princeton Tigers have a great home winning streak, and someday, Clark, someday soon, they'll get a chance to extend that, as the Tigers have been the original road warriors here. Best start under Pete Carroll in 24 years. But they're just all road games. St. Mary's and Iona were in a tournament up in Rochester. And it gets worse as it goes on. Rutgers today, then at UNLV, then at the Cable Car Classic. And they will play their first home game of the year on January 11th. Pete, who makes your schedule, buddy? The one thing about it, they know they won't go home below 500 after this nice start. Rutgers shooting 50%, but only getting 10 shots in 13 minutes. Princeton on these eggs for five in the last possession. Engine taking it in for two. Back to the three-point lead. Leftwich up putting some pressure on Jones. Jones takes it himself. Little runner is short. Hughes, tough shot. Goes down. Keith Hughes with the offensive board and basket. One of the major concerns for the Princeton Tigers, Keith Hughes, as he is for every opponent of Rutgers. That time just going to work on the offensive glass. Miller looking for a backfield cut. It wasn't there. Left, which takes it, and the paint leaves it for Miller. Chris Yetman, who just checked into the game off the last time out, giving Jackson a breather. Henshin driving again to the hoop. And, oh, a travel. Thought a reach in was going to be called, but Jerry Donahue with the travel underneath. So Rutgers a chance to get a lead and maybe get the crowd at the rack into this ballgame. 5.15 to go first half. I really think Rutgers much on their heels, not really attacking. And you have to give Princeton some credit, but it seems like Rutgers has allowed Princeton to control tempo. Hughes misses the short jumper, and Leftwich is there. Oh, very definitely. And 
Hughes, the only aggressive player I see on the floor for Rikers, offensively. There's a backdoor cut by Marquardt, and he dribbled, and he traveled. I thought he dribbled on the baseline, but travel was called. So Didn't the turnover is cleanly. piling up now for Princeton. That's but they not, still have the lead. That's not characteristic of their squad. Turnovers are seven apiece. Came in averaging, what, 10 bucks? 10 turnovers a game. Plus four in the turnover ratio. Chased by pass. Miller. Will behind the back dribble. Ball's loose. Miller, a great play to get it ahead, but a better block by Carter. It's tracked down, though, by Henshaw. And Miller back up all the floor to help out. A defensive play gets the crowd on their feet. Carter again with the quick hand. Maybe the spark will come on the defensive end. They might have to. Because offensively, Rutgers not doing it. Inside Miller, back outside Marquardt. Nice cut off the ball, and there's another layup. Henson getting it this time. That's a silencer. And the way they do it, Tupac, it's not like they go up and jam it. They just kind of lay it off the glass. <laughs> Insult to injury. <laughs> yeah. Another reminder that we're, if we beat you, it will be with basic fundamental basketball. Greg Carter going one on one and got a foul on a pick, I believe. Oh, a three second violation. Yep. 3.30 to go. Just about every break we've had. Princeton's been up three, and they are again 20 to 17. 17, 3.30 to go in the half, and here's another layup. Well, here we see. Hughes in a box out position. See, he's in a box out position, totally out of position here, and unable to react to the back cut. And Henshin gets the easy deuce. But Hughes should have been in a half denial position as opposed to with his back to his man. He's surprised to not see him more full court pressure out of the night. I really am. If you're talking about controlling tempo, and I think you have to do what your team is most comfortable doing, regardless of what the opposition would like to do. And then just make it a battle of execution. So far, Princeton's style it has the tendency to make you tentative. And I think you have to overcome that by being aggressive at both ends of the floor. And so far, Rutgers has not been aggressive enough offensively. And I'm surprised you haven't seen more of the pressure, although you need to score on a regular basis in order to put the pressure on. Miller looking to drive. Outside jumper, Henshin is wild, and Duncan's got the rebound. Inside, Hughes, a little quick turnaround. No, rebound pulled down by Marquardt. Pretty good shot there. Yep. Yeah. 2.25, gotta go with the first half. Hughes is two of six from the floor. Good help there by Duncan. You know, it's amazing. Princeton will rarely beat you off the dribble. It's always via the air or the floor with the bounce pass. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds on the shot clock. The ball finds its way to Miller. Sweeping hook for two. You don't see that shot much no, very no. often, do you? Biggest lead for Princeton. It's five with 1.45 to go in the half. Pass nearly picked off. Duncan finds Carter. Good look for Dab. You know, that's the type of hoop you need to get when you're pressure. The first time Rutgers is really attack the full court pressure. Well, you go back and you think, all right, we got it going now. And then these guys come up and eat 30 seconds on you. You get back on your heels again and they get left. That's what's so frustrating. It's almost like you can't rattle it, especially when it's a close ball game. That's why the eight-point cushion is so critical, I think. Rutgers needs to think about any lead 
before they talk about an eight-pointer. Henshin going baseline, kicks it over to Yetman. Should have taken the shot, perhaps. Marquardt will, and buries a three. Took it with four seconds on the shot clock. Twenty-five, nineteen, under a minute to play first half. Rutgers with 19 points on the board. Come in averaging 74 per outing. Gardner looking, finds Duncan. Like they're content to milk the shot clock. Princeton will have the last opportunity before halftime. Five second difference in the clocks, and Rutgers down to 10 now on the shot clock. Over the top to Hughes. That was a risky pass. Hughes got it. Rutgers got lucky there. Very. Kid Miller really upset that he doesn't come up with the steal because that ends up leading to a foul. So often you see that happen. A good play means so close to being a good play. Miller has full control, unable to reel it in. And Henshin picks up the reach in. Stick around at halftime as we will have a special look at Princeton's professor of hoops, Pete Carrill. He's a piece of work, Pete is. <laughs> Sometimes I think he has supernatural powers he just kind of exerts over the other team. I don't care how much bigger or quicker you are, you will play my way. them both. Jump ball is called and Rutgers will have nine seconds of the alternating possession to try to salvage this trip. Bob Wenzel cannot be pleased. I mean, it, it, it's, there's not a whole lot you can do with Princeton, but... Well, he's not pleased, but he certainly is not surprised. I guarantee you that. I guess I was going to say that, Clark, too many empty trips for Rutgers. Oh, no question about that. He has to be disappointed in that. And I think even when they've gotten defensive rebound, there's been no push to get it out and try to get something easy. Everything Duncan. offensively has been a little bit of a struggle for them. Lean in jumper won't go down. Rebound taken down by Leftwich. He won't have time to get one off, but the Princeton Tigers will go to the locker room with a six-point lead. They come into the rack here in Piscataway. It doesn't seem to phase them. Our score at the half. Princeton 25 and Rutgers 19. But I really think Rutgers, and not to take anything away from Princeton because they've executed their game plan beautifully here in the first half, but Rutgers almost has to turn this into a game at the park. In other words, they've got to make it a helter-skelter affair. And it's going to have to start defensively. But I think they need, any time they get a defensive board, to really look for the transition opportunity. Miller, Mooney, Jackson, Leftwich, and Eastwick on the floor. That's Eastwick getting it inside to Miller. Seven on the shot clock. He leans in for two. So they eat 33 seconds and score. Kit Miller knows how to play inside. He's not going to jump over you. But he's got a wide, strong body. And he's slippery. Biggest lead, and Miller comes up with a steal. Princeton looking a fast break. Well, <laughs> that might be stretching it a bit. Not really. A double dribble is called. And that got Pete Carrill's attention. <laughs> Look at Pete. <laughs> the professor. Comfortably attired. Carter. That's Duncan. Jones down in the corner. Hughes puts it up oh, and draws a foul. And Eastwick now with four. Matt Eastwick has had a hard time staying out of the way here today. Well, if there's an enforcer on the Princeton squad, Eastwick comes as close as anybody. Tough, tough shot here. Little incidental body contact. Eastwick can't believe it. Tough, tough shot by Keith Hughes. There's Pete Carrillo giving Eastwick. See, Eastwick got in trouble by not stopping Hughes from getting to that spot initially. 
back to play defense after Hughes had the offensive spot. Marquard back in. Gets it in the middle of Miller over to Jackson, who had a good long rest at the end of that first half. 27-22, Princeton by five. Could be a key series because Princeton had the ball with the eight-point lead, looking to take it to 10, and Kent Miller turns it over, and Rutgers is able to get it down to five. These guys get up 10 on you. It's like most teams being up 25. That's right. That's right. You have to double it just because of the way they play. And then that sense of panic sets in for the opposition. And Princeton able to thrive on that. Rutgers settling into the zone defense. Yep. Fresh 45 for Princeton. Which is really a calculated gamble when you play this team the zone defense when you have the ability possibly to play them man to man. Because they're a pretty good outside shooting team, although they've not shot it as well this year as they have in the past. Jackson cuts through, Leftwich comes back out, and Jackson goes to the near side. Leftwich obviously has decided you're going to have to shoot over. Jackson, number 11, looked for him to take a shot. Marquardt made a three in the first half. Mooney is also capable. Miller could be the odd guy out. Jackson in a little trouble. Now they reverse it. Ten on the shot clock. Left which a rare shot. Taken down by Hughes. Greg Carter looks to answer. Duncan launches one. Like a little penetration. The pseudo penetration. Beat your man by one step and find a teammate for the open jump shot. And the rock comes alive here at Rutgers. A 6-0 run has him back to within two. And the fans calling for the defense. And Princeton, very patient against the zone. Leftwich aware of the shot clock. It's at seven. Miller pops out. Mark Wide will have to take it and hits a three. Oh, my. You know, I really think the fans need to get on their feet for defense with about eight seconds left on the shot clock <laughs> because otherwise they're going to get tired with Princeton moving the ball around. And again, an open spot up jump shot for a good shooter. Hughes flashing to the middle. A little turnaround. Won't go down. Kept alive on the baseline by Carter. He bounces it in off the back of Marquardt out of bounds. I like the way Craig Carter plays. He's involved. Always. We've got an official timeout. 16 minutes straight up to go in the game. Princeton still ahead by five. Jones and Carter exchange outside. Duncan fakes Boy, the three. Leftwich is defending Dabs inside, and they miss him. And it's either going to be an offensive foul or an out of bounds. Either way, it's going to Princeton. I believe they did call the offensive foul. Not good recognition there. Dabs flashing inside, and Leftwich eclipsed. And they didn't find him said this before, Mike, but when the game is this slow, every empty possession is huge. You almost get the feeling that Princeton's going to keep doing this, and before the fans and really some of the Rutgers players are aware of it, the game's going to be over. Exactly. It'll slip away from them. Lost opportunity. Let's see if they can get a transition hoop. Jones. Good job by Princeton to get back. Dab skips it to Duncan. Dab trying to get position low on Marquardt. Hughes comes baseline. Hughes wants to take a good feed for Dabs. He finds a way for two. Eight for Dabs. Back to a three-point game. Rutgers content to stay in the zone. 
which is going to considerably shorten this game. It will shorten the game and put tremendous pressure on their half-court offense because it's tough to run out of a zone defense. Amazing the mind games that Princeton can play on you. Rutgers is only down three here, yet I'm sure the Rutgers kids feel they're way behind in this game. They feel a sense of urgency. Yep. Left which left open. Long with the jump shot. Hughes made him change it. Here comes Duncan. Rutgers can get to one or tie with a three. Oh, picked off by Jackson. Again, a careless trip for Rutgers. Jackson, good look for Marquard. Won't go. Pulled down by Dabbs. I just don't understand why Rutgers upon defensive boards, although they haven't handled the ball in the open court well, that may be part of the reason for pulling it back. And maybe they want to try to throw it inside to Dabs and Hughes. Dabs in and out on the turnaround. Jones sneaking in, but Jimmy Burr's got a foul. Keith Hughes came over the top. Tough break for Dabs, had the position. And had... see the turnover. Rutgers with 11. They've only got 10 hoops. Mm -hmm. Charles Weiler, the freshman for Rutgers, is up at the scorer's table. He'll get his chance to come in and see if he can make any sense of this for Rutgers. Marquardt. He only took a shot in the lane and reverse it. Jackson and wide open. You do not do it any better than that. That is great ball movement. Get it to your best three-point shooter behind the arc. Picture perfect. The upset there, Clark, was he took it with 25 still on the shot clock. But it was just too good a shot to pass up. I mean, after that excellent ball movement inside, outside, top, wing, knock it down. Dabs flashing through. Marquardt will be called on the reach. Third on Marquardt. Here comes Charles Weiler into the game. And Dabbs will sit down. This is Dabbs' fourth game. He missed the first two because of an ankle injury. Wearing a special brace on that right ankle. Told me before the game he's about 80%. And probably still a week or so away from being at 100%. Rutgers got a fresh 45 in the clock. They're down six. Only 13 minutes to go in the game. Duncan, spin move, tough shot. Picked off by Henson, who's back in. Well, you really can't afford. You knew he wasn't going coast to coast, did you? <laughs> no doubt about it. You really can't afford four shots against Princeton. Because you're only going to get so many. I think Rutgers is going to be forced to come out of the zone defense. They're in a man-to-man. -man, yeah. yeah. They're going to be forced to play a little more aggressively. I just going to say, a more aggressive man-to-man -man than we're seeing, especially right. on the guards. That's where it has to start out front. But Earl Duncan bothered by a sprained ankle lately. Mark Ward short with the three. And really with this unit, this is not Rutgers' best defensive team. They need to throw Mike Jones in there. Hughes flashing through, gets his own rebound, won't go. Tipped long, back to Duncan, stolen by Jackson, foul on Duncan. And you won't say this too often, but a Princeton player out quick to Rutgers player to the ball there. Well, I think Duncan was just waiting for the ball to come back to him instead of attacking the basketball. And we've got a timeout, 11.54 to go. Bobby Wenzel not happy. He shouldn't be, he's down six. The pass that's often overlooked is the pass before the assist. Inside out, now Henshin is going to make the pass that leads to the assist because he kicks it immediately to Leftwich, who's able to make the assist to Jackson. But if Henshin hesitates on that initial pass, then Jackson's unable to get the open shot. Excellent ball move. After a quick start in the second half, Rutgers only three points in the last five minutes and 19 seconds. You really think Rutgers has to turn it into an alley fight, make it a helter-skelter wild game. But they're on their heels, and that's what Princeton does to you. They get a lead, and you're scared to go out and pressure. Always weary of the back, leery of the back cut. 
Henshin and Jones tie up. Oh, excuse me, that's Smith, Daryl Smith. Wenzel wants, a, he wants an, an intentional foul. I don't think he can expect to get that one. That's um, that's reaching a bit, Bob. Now here's the steal, and then there's the grab. Just a little tangle, a little do -si do Inside, Dabs converts. Let's see if Mike Jones can be a defensive catalyst for him now. One, two, two pressure. You'd think Jones and Smith and Carter. Right, this is the unit that if Rutgers is going to apply pressure defensively, this is the unit that would get it done. But one of the things that happens with Princeton is they, they spread you out so much and they bring your big guy away from the hole. So your front, your, your backcourt people may be a little scared to put the heat on. Engine top of the key, Jackson. Now Leftwich finds Mark White. Miller skips it back out. They left Jackson alone. He makes him pay. Well, if you're going to double, you don't leave him. Eight for Jackson. The lead seven again. Ten and a half to go. This one's slipping away from the Scarlet Knights. I just don't see enough aggressiveness and activity. Smith finds Savage, who lost it on the way up. Miller got a hand in there. Turnaround won't go. Savage the board. And he traveled with it. Well, I don't know. Rutgers getting a little frustrated. They've been inside, and they've not gotten fouls called. And from, from my angle, I've not seen whether or not those have actually been fouls, but nonetheless, I sent some frustration on the part of the Scarlet Knights. What you often see happen, Clark, in, in a situation like this is instead of getting aggressive, they tend to get wild. Excellent point, Mike. Backdoor cut. Henshin couldn't handle the pass. Here comes Carter. Carter, a little pull up in the lane. Won't go for him. Volleyball rebound taken down by Jackson. The opportunities apparently there, but the empty trips continue to haunt Rutgers. second half. Spins on Savage outside. Henshin looking inside for Miller. He wants to work on Savage. 11 on the shot clock. Jackson, little cut to the hoop. Won't go. Rebound. Nice strong one in there by Dabs. Savage thought about three. Takes a tougher shot than he had originally, but good position. Mike Jones coming up with the hoop. Thirty-six, thirty-one, five-point game with eight and a half to play. Marquard was open for a flash on the cut. Now he comes high. That's foul. Savage went down, intentional foul, and a good call by Jerry Donahue. Savage went down, his man tried to cut away from him, he grabbed him. Well, Savage ran into a pick, felt like he got clipped. And then in his frustration, just tried to tackle. I don't know if it's Henson or Marquardt. Keith Hughes is going to come back in, and Savage will go out. Well, there's Savage at the top of your screen. And there's the there's the intentional foul right there as he was picked off by Henson. He hit the deck and then reached in and grabbed Matt Henson. Henson makes the first, pushes it back to a six-point Princeton lead. <laughs> when you look at this Princeton squad, you realize these guys are not on athletic scholarship. They recognize that they're the underdog. A lot of times that they go out of the conference, but and I think that's a rallying point for this unit, for this team. Sure. You just saw that interesting statistic. 33 passes. That's an average of 11 per possession. And that wears 
wears you out. Oh, As a defensive team, it frustrates you and it wears you down emotionally. You can never get anything going, anything to feed the frenzy of the fans. Miller spins in the lane, sweeps with the hook, no, and he's used for the rebound. But under eight minutes to go in the game, as Princeton continues to eat the clock every time they get possession. Duncan trying to make a move on Jackson, just powers his way in, short with the jumper, dabs there for the follow. I like the play by Duncan, though. He's strong enough to back in. He just needs to make sure he's under control, ready to pass as well as shoot once he gets into the paint. 38-33, Princeton. Miller up to Jackson. He tracks it down. I thought he double dribbled. So there's a few fans along the baseline. Into Miller. Back out to Marquardt. Jackson 15 on the shot clock. Under seven minutes now to go in the game. Jackson's open. Hits another one. Mike Jones got sealed behind the pick. You've got to stay in his chest, obviously. Because when he has time, mark him up. Princeton's not only eating the clock, they're trading three for two. Excellent. That's right. Kyle's going to be called on Marquardt down in the corner as he now picks up his fourth. He and Eastwick with four apiece for Princeton. And I think an indication, Clark, of, of what you've been saying is something we'll discuss in a minute. 6.38 to go in the game. 41-33. The eight to go, time becoming a factor, and Princeton still does what they want. Kent Miller leads his team in scoring, rebounds, and assists, but how about the assist without the ball? The pick there as he catches Mike Jones with the little brush pick. Jones trying to go behind, but with a shooter like Sean Jackson, who's knocked down three triples this half, you must go through that screen as opposed to trying to sneak behind. Give the shooter too much time. Go over the top, rather. Carter's on the floor with Hughes, Dabs, Duncan, and Smith. Mike, you made a point during our break about the Rutgers team only, no player has more than one foul, which is an indicator of a couple of things, but the most important is that they haven't really been aggressive. Carter takes it in traffic, a little pull-up won't go, battle for the boards, and that's going to be a travel as Miller went down with the ball, so Rutgers gets it back with 6.15 to go down eight. What I think Rutgers has to do now is just try to put it on the floor and get to the basket, try to draw some fouls, try to stretch this game out, because if they don't get to the free throw line and stop the clock, this game is going to mm -hmm. be <laughs> over in about 10 minutes. <laughs> right, before they realize it is. Duncan's little turnaround goes down. Duncan with 10. Dabs has 12. Hughes, 7. But the Tigers lead by 6. Goes down low to Miller. Kicks it back out. Henshin. Miller trying to set that pick to Sean Jackson up top. They got a mismatch down low. Nice job by Miller using the basket. And a technical foul on Brent Dabbs for slamming the basketball down. And it's really coming apart here for the Scarlet Knights. Craig Carter caught in a mismatch. And then a nice move here by Kit Miller. There's what resulted in the technical by Brent Dabbs. He was also whistled for the personal foul. And we mentioned earlier in this telecast that earlier during this game that Rutgers needed to get on top. I can't recall that they've had a lead. I don't think they have. I don't think they have. Miller missing the shot on the personal, but Jackson now will shoot the technical foul shots. Don't forget on Sunday night, the Bears and the Lions on Sunday night NFL here on ESPN, the black and blue division. And Jackson, who still hasn't missed a free throw this year, has 13 on the game, and Princeton a 10-point lead with five and a half to go. And the ball. Yep. 
And I mentioned earlier, Princeton an excellent free throw shooting team. So as Rutgers gets aggressive. And as we talked about earlier too, Miller can come out and handle the basketball. It's gonna be very tough for Dabs to cover him in the open floor. Exactly. Off the ball, they got Keith Hughes holding Matt Eastwood. And now the, the Scarlet Knights only one foul away from sending the Tigers to the strike. And Pete Carrill wouldn't diagram it any differently than it's transpired here today. There you see he's got the little smirk. He just enjoyed himself over there. He's kind of an afternoon with his cat away. And Princeton takes a timeout as Rutgers had some good defensive pressure set up. 5.19 to go. The Tigers of Princeton lead by 10. Defending national champions next Wednesday night. Hughes all over Eastwood. It's the kind of defense you would have expected out of Rutgers about an hour and a half ago. Maybe a little too late now. Smith looking for a travel, but got himself a foul. Seventh team foul, second on Daryl Smith. Daryl Smith and Keith Hughes now, the only two Rutgers players with two fouls. So the Scarlet Knights have a lot of fouls to give if they want to give them as Jones comes back in and Smith goes to the bench. As Bach pointed out, Princeton shoots as a team more than 80% from the line. This guy had a career high 20 last year's game against Rutgers. As we crack the five minute mark, it's a 10 point game. The thing that Princeton doesn't get a whole lot of credit for is they're forcing Rutgers, even though quick shot there and it turns out to be an air ball eastwood to rebound they've been eastwood forcing looked like he may have walked right? yeah i thought so too they have been forcing rutgers though to hold the ball 25 seconds themselves to get a shot off and that's not rutgers game at all it really isn't in princeton like you say under recognized as a defensive ball club they're pretty good defensively yeah. and the rack stifled baffled confused Guy, hands on his hips, he's like, what? <laughs> Leftwich with his first point of the game, and Bobby Wenzel, that's kind of a half-hearted wave that's coming out of the fans <laughs> behind the backboard there. I guess that's one way of saying it. No electricity here today. Princeton has blown a fuse for the night. Oh, great play there, and it's out of bounds. It's going back to Princeton. Eastwick with the block and then threw it off one of the Rutgers players. Watch this. Excellent anticipation, and Jones unable to handle that hot ball coming at him. Princeton with possession, a double-digit lead. And there, Keith Hughes, the quick hands, slapping it off the leg of Eastwick. The ball will go back to Rutgers. Pete Carrill is literally laughing over there, giving the official a hard time. Kind of waves the program at him. To the point you made just a moment ago, Mike, about Rutgers milking the clock for shots. I mean, that's playing right into Princeton's hands. And has played into their hands all afternoon. Under four minutes now as Carter tries to get up quickly defensively. Jones jumps in looking for the steal. Princeton now set in the half court. I mean, when you take 20 seconds on your own end, you know they're going to take 30 on there. So you're looking at only a shot every minute. Left which Nice feed from Kit Miller. The clinic. Princeton, the Princeton faithful who are here are loving this. It's a clinic. Miller with six assists in the game. Duncan front rims a three. Jackson jumps in for the rebound. Gets it out to left which. Princeton by 12 and the ball with 3.20 to go. And again, you just cannot say enough about Pete Carrill and what he does with this club. Look at that. Look at that. Henshin with the layup going back door. Rutgers calls a timeout. 3.08 to go. Princeton 51. Rutgers 37. 
back door, just like Princeton. <laughs> and Princeton, Lewis, Princeton is back door and Rutgers to death. Look at the spacing. Fred Carter mesmerized by the ball and Kit Miller, and that leaves Henshin all alone on the backside. And they lift everybody else up. See, they lift everybody else up so there's no backside or weak side help. And the Princeton faithful having a ball here. They have been more vocal and have had a whole lot more to cheer about than about the other 7,500. We talked about points in the paint and the size and strength advantage that Rutgers had going in on paper. And Princeton has gotten 20 points in the paint compared to 14 by Rutgers. And just when you thought Rutgers was going to make some sort of last-ditch effort, Princeton just comes back and blasts him with a 10-2 run. Smith feeds underneath, and Jones gets two. Six points for Jones. Leftwich able to spin his way into the fourth court. Again, that matchup between Miller and Dabbs. Hinchin takes it on Smith. Leftwich comes back for the ball. And take it 25 seconds off the shot clock. And it goes to Miller with 10 on the shot clock. Back out to Eastwood. Up to Henshin. Got time for a three. He buries it. Nine for Henshin. 15 point Princeton lead. Duncan leans in and gets fouled by Henshin. And Pete Curiel gets up. For the first time I've seen Pete upset this afternoon at Henshin for committing that foul. Well, he doesn't want that clock to be stopped. Princeton nowhere near over the limit, though, and the foul was called before Duncan got the shot off. Earl just catches and fires. A rebound by Eastwood. Duncan has really struggled with his shot coming into today's game, only shooting. 28% from the floor. Hasn't done much to improve that here today. And there's a foul which is given up by Mike Jones, but it's given up after Princeton's taken 23 seconds off the clock. You have to think that Rutgers they really just went flat all afternoon and recognizing that Princeton is an 80% free throw shooting team. They're just content to lay back and not commit the foul. Just had a note handed to me that we couldn't hear it, but the Princeton fans in the back have been chanting, we want Vegas. <laughs> well, we're going to get them next Wednesday night. Hughes throws up the air ball. Just total frustration now. Painfully frustrating for Rutgers. Just in case any of the running Rebs are listening, it was the Princeton fans that were chanting, we want Vegas, not the Princeton players who were <laughs> chanting, we want Vegas. 119 now to go in the game. 54-39, a very, very impressive win by the undefeated Tigers of Princeton here this afternoon. Miller, again, blocked down low this time as Smith came and helped out. Duncan trying to dish it off, finds Hughes for two. But I do not see the Rutgers bench jumping up and calling any timeouts. I do not see any intentional fouls. I do see layups. The Tigers are making most of them. And as we count it down now, as we hit the 35 second clock, We've got a foul on the drive. going to put Earl Duncan on the line. Might have been Sean Jackson who committed that. Weiler comes in and Dabs goes out. A very depressed Rutgers bench. Unable to get much, if anything, going. Keith Hughes checks out. Hughes unofficially sits down with nine. How about this crowd at the rack? They usually get a workout when they show up. They'll have to go jump on the Stairmaster to get a sweat going today. Princeton kept them out of it just about for the duration. 
Duncan makes his free throws. Boy, this is ugly. When you talk about from Rutgers' standpoint. You don't often see Rutgers just get it handed to him at home, and that's what's happened here. Weiler goes up and gets an offensive board and puts it back in. But with under 20 seconds to go, the Princeton Tigers remain undefeated. And they have yet to play a home game. They'll be awesome when they get down to Jadwin, then, won't they? <laughs> oh, yeah. They'll have a lot of momentum going in there. Rutgers content to let the clock run out. And Pete Carrill gives a little wave, and he has done it again. In 25 years of coaching, 24 at Princeton, Pete Carrill has now come up with I believe is 421st unofficially, but I'm sure Pete's not counting anymore. But this one is sweet. The in-state rivalry, 404th career win. Okay. And he has Rutgers numbers, that's for sure, winning five of the last six. And Clark Kellogg's making his way downstairs, hopefully to get a chance to talk to Pete. And again, Princeton can do some funny things to you. Look what they did to Rutgers here. Lowest scoring game. Since a loss to Temple back in 1984, and actually they would have been well below 39 points, except for some easy baskets that were given up at the end there, as Princeton just came into this building, faced the 8,500 people, faced Rutgers, and as we set off the top, they made the Scarlet Knights play their way. We'll be back with some final thoughts here in just a minute.